you know, Kyle, I'll let you touch on this and Damon, maybe like when you find like a player like that, from like a skill development standpoint or just working with the behind the scenes, like what do you notice at a young age is kind of the driver? What, what makes these kids inherently different than, than somebody else? Because if you look at a guy like Kevin, like, and I love to use him as an example because he, you know, he's not six, seven and can't hit his head on the rim. So what about the him or guys like him, you know, make, make, make him different. You know, I, I, I love talking about, like, I love this question. I love the answer. So I've been coaching pro now for 10 years. I played pro for a certain point in time. And for about eight years before I started coaching, I trained a lot of pros. And the one thing that always came back to me and, you know, NBA guys that make big money, college player, you know, the one thing that always came back was routine. So the great ones, like there's good ones, like there's good players in the NBA making, you know, $30 million a year, but the great players, the guys that what I consider a great player is a guy who maxed out, right. He's just maxed out. Like he's as fast as his body will allow him to be. He is as athletic as his body will allow him to be. He is as tough as he possibly can be. Right. And sometimes those guys don't play in the NBA, right. They, they play at different levels just because of their circumstance or physic physicals or whatever the case may be. But all of the great ones have a routine. Okay. And you can see it immediately. So I always do when I meet a new player, when I always do when I'm recruiting, recruiting is what's the first thing they do when they get in the gym. Okay. So Kevin Pangos, for example, I like, he gets in the gym, everyone's talking, putting, looking at their phones. Everyone's kind of walking around shooting, you know, jogging after the ball, this and that Kevin is sideline to sideline ball handler. Then he's on the skipping rope. Then he's, then he's stretching and then he's form shooting. Then he's off the dribble and then he's hitting his three. And then now by the time we say, okay, everybody come on in, let's get started. This guy's got like a good sweat going, his touch and time. I mean, his razor sharp, you know, his form is nice. He's, he's, he's ready to play and, and he's, he's mentally locked in. And I've seen it at every single level. And I have coached so many good players and they never have a routine. I've coached a few great players and they always have a routine. Like in how you can tell a guy has a routine is not by, you know, the first time you meet him, what does he do or what does he not do? That, that's not how you tell. If you ask a guy on the phone what his routine is, he should be able to tell you like to a letter, to a minute, to a rep, what his pre-practice routine is, periodized. Okay, so preseason, I do it like this. In season, I do it like this. Postseason, I do it like this. You know, game day, I do it like this, blah, 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 blah. And it never, ever fails. Every time I'm around a guy that has a routine, he's just a killer. He's a dog. They're like cut from the exact same cloth. They really, really, really want to win, man. Like they're just locked in all the time. They're the same. Like it's like you're talking to the same guy. And then for me, you know, I've never been at work. I have never worked in the NBA. I've never been around a lot of these guys. I, I've been I've been able to be around some. But then you start reading the Kobe stories, you start reading, you know, the Ray Allen stories, you start reading the guys that are ultra consistent and had the 17 year careers and won some championships. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. For me, it just starts with routine because the guys that really have that 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 consistent routine, those are the guys that consistently play well. And there's so many guys at the highest levels I've watched. Them. They just come in to just pick up a ball. They just kind of mess around a little bit. They start warming up a little bit. And then when you get into the details and the guts of a routine, I don't care about a routine for a week or a month. I'm talking six months to 10 months to four years to six years, like the same every day, right? Because uh, consistency adds, right? Like it compounds, right? Consistency compounds, like it, it builds and it builds and it builds. And the routine too this is the other part of the routine because, you know, I coach now I lose four games in a row. I get, I get fired. My family doesn't eat. Right. So I'm, I'm looking for every little sliver of a detail that'll help me and help our guys win. The season is such an up and down battle, right? It's such a mental battle. Everybody goes through a bad time during the season. Every player, every coach, every water boy, every film guy has a bad week or whatever. It's an, it's inevitable. It's, it's a guarantee. It is like tax. And the routine is what gets you through them. Like the shooters that are slumping, it's their routine that gets you through it. The coaches that lose three in a row, it's their consistent preparation and ability to stay positive and locked in or whatever that gets them through it. 
And I just, that's just, that's what it is for me, man. And like the way we train and our workouts and stuff, like they're designed to build a routine. And that's why I think like there's so many trainers that are helping players and helping the game. And there's so many trainers that are hurting the game because they're taking kids away from that number one key that we're discussing right now, which is like the ability to be self-motivated, right? Because it doesn't matter how many trainers you have during the summer, how, how hard you work, you know, how many fucking videos you have on YouTube or how many you know, on, on Instagram or whatever the case may be, all that shit is gone. And you're alone out there in the fourth quarter when you're dog tired and it's a four point game, five and a half minutes left and your coach is calling combination plays and you're going from man to zone and zone to man. And you're being this and that. And, and, and you know, it, your life depends on this game. You're alone. Like it's just you and the work that you did. It doesn't matter if you, it, you know, what your teammates are doing for you, you still got to execute, right? It's five on five. Like you're out there alone, if you're not truly prepared and, and whatever, and it always comes back to routine for me. And I tell the same story about fun. Like, look at, I, for, I, I, I worked with Andrea Bargnani, probably the best talented shooter that I've ever worked with as far as like a seven footer and like, like raw talent. I worked with Andrea for five or six weeks when the NBA was on lockout. And the guy was the worst. His work ethic was <laughs> the worst. No, I'm telling you, he, he, he was the, he literally came in the gym like five minutes before the workout and he could not wait to get out of there. And it wasn't my workouts that he didn't like or whatever. It wasn't that. I talked to a lot of people about him and, and then look at his game. Look at his NBA career. A calf strain would have kept this guy out for four months. Like he just didn't love it. Right. And that was his NBA career. It was like, could have been good, should have been good. Shit, in today's game, the guy could, you know, on papers, is, is perfect. But he didn't love the game, he didn't love the workout, had no routine. This couldn't wait to get out of there, right? You know, and so and what they do to stay in shape, right? Anyways, man, that, that was my long rant. Sorry, Damon, you and I, you and I have never met, and then you just... It was no, like no. You just sat <laughs> my yeah, okay. sessions, man. You'll see, you'll see. There, he, he's the best. To get <laughs> you fired up. Yeah, what I don't about want to you? Talk at all. I just want to hear you talk some more. <laughs> <laughs> David, what about you? I mean, obviously, like being close to, and being an alumni of, uh, you know, University of Virginia men's basketball, and you kind of have the end with these guys, and you've been working with a lot of them. Like, what's like, I guess, the common theme that you see from these guys that, you know, come in maybe as like freak athletes, and then the guys that really start to last? Like, I know you've worked with Ty Jerome quite a bit. You look at Ty, like, from what I know about him, you obviously know him way better. There's no way that guy's the best athlete. Right. Like what makes someone like that different to you? And I guess, I don't know, maybe just touch on that a little bit. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to beat a dead horse with everything KJ was touching on with just the routine, the routine, the routine is it's just everything. Um, but again, like the self accountability and the discipline of it all. I mean, UVA obviously had the, the famous 16 one loss to UMBC several years ago. Um, and first text I had from Ty Jerome the next day was like, I didn't do a good enough job last year. Um, he said, wherever you are, like I will drive wherever I need to go. It doesn't matter how far it is. It can be mornings. It can be night. Like we have to be in the gym more than we were the year before. Um, and we've been in the gym a lot, but just that, that level of, of self-reflection and that level of, Hey, it, it's on me, that internal locus of control. What can I do better? How can I be more disciplined where, especially now and KJ touched on it. It's so easy. Like you have, you have guys who are not working hard at all who have, hundreds of thousands of followers or whatever because of what their work looks like. I mean, we all know like kids, man, you got to be dogs and you got to be pit bulls. And I tell kids all the time now, like a lot of poodles out there, you got a lot of show dogs, but not a lot of dogs you want in a dog fight. And, you know, you have to be that. You have to be able to say like, I did, I wasn't good enough. I have to go harder. And I was going as hard as I can, but I got, I got to find a way to, to dig a little bit deeper. Like your shirt, man, I got to have a little bit more grit. Um, you know, kid, we have all these kids, kids, pros, whatever, who, like, man, they don't even know if they have a second win because they never exhaust their first one because when they get tired, they, they shut it down. They're never going to be in the best shape because they don't know what their best shape is. Um, but, it, but like guys like Ty and, I mean, he came in, whatever, top 100 kid, but uh, anybody who talked to him, is, is he athletic enough? Like, I mean, he's 6'6 and barely dunks. His vertical is, is horrible. His you know, the NBA shuttle times and all that were minimal but he's absolutely maximizing himself. He's never a guy. It's, it's never make 10 shots. It's makes, you know, make X amount in a row. It's have to be swishes. It has to be, it's things like that, that extra level of discipline maximizing when he is in the gym, KJ was touching on it. It's not mindless, worthless ball handling and wasting time. It's 
man, if you come off of a ball screen and bigs in drop and you're shooting a quick pull up, well, then where can we get a second shot? Where can we get a third shot? How can we maximize the number of shot attempts within that hour as opposed to, oh, we're going to drift to the corner, shoot a three, and then we're going to walk back to half court and do it again. Um, really trying to maximize the, you know, the shot attempts, the work when we're in the gym. Um, because it is important, obviously, like the days of being in the gym for three and four hours are kind of done. Like people aren't doing that for better or for worse. So how can we maximize, maximize that time when we're there? Um, but again, again, KJ said, said it so much better than I can with the routine, but then that just the self-awareness to know that in the day it is on you and talking about the love of the game, especially with, with good players, with high level players. I feel like there, there are a lot of guys who love the game, but there are even more who, especially now love the love that you get from the game. You have a highlight dunk and goes viral on Twitter or whatever. And, doesn't matter that you didn't work or what you've got that one highlight and those guys who actually love the game, who are willing to sacrifice the early mornings, the late nights, the, man, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I'm going to get up a hundred extra shots. Those are the ones that make it. And, and to, you know, to your point, like maybe that means you're a pro, maybe you, you shouldn't have been the NBA player, but you earned your way to that, like Ty Jerome, or maybe it's, maybe it's a kid who shouldn't have played college basketball, but they, you know, I've got a kid who's playing division two at Tribeca Nazarene in Tennessee and, no business whatsoever playing college basketball, but I've been with him for five years. He shows up 30 minutes before literally every single workout has a full stretching and ball handling routine. He's drenched in sweat. Then we get after it. And for him, like greatness maximizing his ceiling is he's going to school for free at the division two level. And yeah. if he has a post collegiate career, who knows? Um, but again, like the, the great ones are the ones that, that find that way. They're, they're self-aware, they're disciplined. And then like KJ said, like they have a, they have a routine. 